Hello, I'm Ed Overstreet. Welcome to the Night Sky Imaging Channel. Uh, we've been working with uh, a uh, deep space object called uh, IC7822. Um, actually, I keep calling it the Crescent Nebula. Uh, pay no attention to that. But um, we're going to be using the uh, dynamic crop feature and uh, process in Pix Insight. So let's go on over there now and share my screen. Uh, the last time we uh, were uh, processing this image, we applied a linear fit using the O3 uh, channel uh, as a reference, and we applied a uh, channel likeness to the HA and the S2 so that the channels matched. Uh, as they were intended to. And now we're going to uh, look at our images uh, and check the edges to see if we need to crop. And I know that we do. I'll always have to crop something. And uh, here we go. We've got some boundary problems uh, at the top, the bottom, and at the side. Actually, it's hard to see, but this uh, some boundary problems there as well. And in the O3, we have some boundary problems here. Uh, this has ex some issues here too. So, um, this is the most pronounced, so why don't we just uh, start there? You can either go to Process, All Processes, and go down to Dynamic Crop, which is right here under all processes. Uh, I happen to save the dynamic crop uh, process because I use it I use it with every uh, uh, new data set and when you bring it up uh, you actually really do not need to do anything other than use the default settings and uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, just grab an edge and I'll hold the mouse down and bring it in some. And I'll go up here and I'll grab an edge and I'll bring it down. I'll do the same on each. I hate giving up this nebulosity down here, so I'm going to make this as close to this issue as possible. In fact, I don't have to go down this far here either. And we can move this over here some. Probably, I'm not giving up too much over here, so I'll leave that as it is. Now, if I selected the execute feature, it would crop this, and that would be fine if that were my only image. But I have to crop the other two exactly the same so that when I combine them, the, uh, the images line up. So what you do, and this is a little bit of a uh, trick, but you have to do this. I just get this out of my way and you take the process, the triangle, and you drag it over and you put it on one of the images and that crops it and then you make this the active image and you crop that. So both of these images have been cropped um, precisely uh, the same as this image, but we haven't cropped that. You do this one last, and that's when you, you don't drag this over, you'll use the execute key. Okay, now these are um, well, they're not going to line up because uh, they're different. Uh, Yeah, we'll make 
the line up. And then uh, when you blink back and forth, you can see that they're lined up and I'm just rotating between the images. And on a Mac you do that by holding the command key and the page down key. So we go from HA to S2 to O3. Okay, so that's our data. And it has successfully been cropped. So we can close this out. And you notice when you close it out, my process still remains intact. So what we're going to do next uh, in our next video, we're going to combine these three images um, probably using the uh, Hubble palette. But we can try different combinations and see how they look and see what brings out the best contrast uh, and then we can go with that. So. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and I trust everybody will have a good day. Make sure you say something nice to somebody, and I know you all make their day, and you'll probably feel a whole lot better by having done so. Clear skies. Mm -hmm.